Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the January 2021 virtual field trip uh, to the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation. My name is Michelle Brocious, and I'm your uh, bird walk leader this evening. A quick note uh, about these virtual field trips in case you never have attended before. Uh, so what I do is each month I select a location for anyone who wants to participate to go and visit. Uh, while on your visit, uh, you will enjoy the location however you want. Uh, look for birds, look for other wildlife, uh, and then you will do either journaling, uh, a bird list, photography, a poem, any type of creative endeavor you want and submit your item to me that I compile into this scrapbook that I'll be presenting this evening uh, and then uh, we have this discussion. So this uh, month's field trip was at the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation and I will take us away. Oops. There we go. Okay, so located on 325 acres in Cleveland's Industrial Heart, through the villages of Cuyahoga Heights and Valley View, the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation offers unique opportunities for discovery. Tucked amid this short line, railroad trestle, pipelines, and steel mills are the lush fields and forests of the River Valley. The reservation follows a portion of its namesake, the historic 309-mile Ohio and Erie Canal. Together with the Cuyahoga River, the northernmost remaining 4.4 miles of water canal provides wildlife management areas, fishing opportunities, and scenic beauty. Picnicking, hiking trails, and a 7.2-mile towpath trail links the reservation with the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Indoor exhibits and interpretive programming at the Leonard Krieger Canalway Center explore the complicated relationships between people, industry, and nature. Trails around the center are paved for easy access. The center also features a multi-purpose room available for public functions and Earthwards, a nature shop of Cleveland Metro Parks. So yeah, all of that uh, activity with the Canalway Center sounds really interesting and I would be looking forward to checking that out after the pandemic is behind us. Uh, so that description, that first paragraph was from the Ohio and Erie Canalway website and there's a link uh, to the website there and uh, I, I believe from from what I gather from that website that the canal was you know much longer back in the day and it focuses on the whole area surrounding the canal which goes into or near uh, the National Park. All right and then additionally amidst the surrounding industrial area this reservation has been naturally reclaimed to support thriving habitats including wetlands, forests, the Cuyahoga River and flowing canal and that's from the Cleveland Metro Parks Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation website. All right, so when, when you cross from the Canalway Center to the towpath, we have this beautiful sign here that uh, Tom Fishburne took a picture of, and I also took a picture of it uh, when I went on my visit, uh, but Tom's picture was much more beautiful, so I used his. Uh, but I wanted to take a closer look at this sign uh, for some interesting information. The Ohio and Erie Canal once fueled the region's thriving industry, helping to make Ohio one of the most prosperous states in the nation. Eventually, advancements in transportation along with destructive flooding made the canal obsolete. Large sections of canal were filled in and those that remained were abandoned, left to be reclaimed by nature. The Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation now thrives as a haven for wildlife. The water of the canal provides excellent wetland habitat for fish, turtles, frogs, and beavers. While the hillsides of the surrounding Cuyahoga, Valley, Cuyahoga River Valley serve as a much needed sanctuary for migrating and nesting birds like yellow warblers. As you walk along the towpath, take the time to appreciate the natural world around you. Industry took a toll on the land, but nature has found a way to bounce back. So I, I loved that sign. I loved the message in the sign, and I wanted to share it with all of you, uh, whether or not you went and, and may have seen it yourself. All right, our target species, the bald eagle. The bald eagle has been the national emblem of the United States since 1782 and a spiritual symbol for Native peoples for far longer than that. These regal birds aren't really bald, but their white feathered heads gleam in contrast to their chocolate brown body and wings. Look for them soaring in solitude, chasing other birds for their food, or gathering by the hundreds in winter. Once endangered by hunting and pesticides, bald eagles have flourished under protection. And that description is from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, and you can check out that link 
for more information. In the Cornell lab, they always have a fun fact section for each bird. So I always look at that too. That's a, a recommendation. And then a beautiful picture of an adult bald eagle in flight at the reservation by Tom Fishburn. All right, so we're going to start with me this evening. I saw 15 species on my only visit. Uh, I visited Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation on Saturday, January 16th from 9.27 a.m. to 12.07 p.m. It was a relatively chilly morning at temperatures between 34 to 36 degrees Fahrenheit throughout my visit. However, I was fortunate to have chosen a sunny day. As soon as I exited my car, I was greeted by the sweet call of a white-throated sparrow in the brush by the parking lot. I hurried to don my gear and carefully crept closer to the movement. I managed to get some good looks at the bird and then noticed there were more birds hopping around in the field behind it. In all, I counted eight white-throated sparrow as they made their way across the field. As I continued along my way, I marveled at the sights of the Industrial Valley and how beautifully the structures fit into the natural environment now protected by the reservation. The Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation is truly an urban oasis for wildlife. And I have here two images that I took of the urban scenes at the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation. And then here are the uh, white-throated sparrows I saw that the one on the left is the one that called to me when I exited my car. So it was still there and I managed to, to get a picture of it. And then one of the sparrows in the field behind it. So I headed north along the towpath as I knew this was the direction of the eagle's nest and was delighted to see three great blue heron flying together overhead. That would have been an amazing photograph, but my camera was not set up properly for the shot and refused to even take a bad picture to tweak later. I set up my camera in time to see three Canada geese flying overhead instead, which, you know, I would have rather had the blue heron. But. Not too far down the path, I happened across a very photogenic song sparrow that posed for several minutes. So on the left is the, the picture of the, the geese in flight that I managed to get, and then uh, the song sparrow on the right. All right. After my encounter with the song sparrow, I was happy to begin seeing juvenile bald eagles flying around the area. I counted six bald eagles throughout my entire visit. When the towpath joined up with the Cuyahoga River, I decided to check out the local waterfowl. There were four American black duck, 23 mallards, and one American widgeon in the river that day. I met a birder on the trail who said he had seen two common mercanser, but I had no such luck finding them. I made my way to the Six Mile Flats Trail, and this is where the real fun began on my visit. Almost immediately upon entering the woodland, an adult bald eagle swooped in and perched in a tree above me. It allowed me to take some photos before flying away. I continued along the trail and observed black-capped chickadee and downy woodpecker. I was taking photos of a chickadee when a brave Carolina wren flew in and landed on a branch mere feet away from me. It stayed for a few minutes and didn't seem to mind my presence at all as I snapped some really clear and crisp photos of it. So on the left there is my photo of the American black ducks um, at the reservation. And here's the bald eagle. It was really, it was like a tree like right in front of me. So I had um, some really good photos. There were branches in the way, so I was really surprised to find out I had two in focus, in focus pictures. And then here's the Carolina wren. And then I had uh, downy woodpecker. Uh, I was following the downy woodpecker on the left up the tree with my camera taking pictures and did not even notice there was a second downy. As you can see on the right hand side, uh, there's a second one that was startled away from the first one and it scared me. So I jumped when I took the picture. So I, I think the part of the blur in the wings is because I jumped. <laughs> All right. I made my way along the Six Mile Flats Trail to where the bald eagle's nest is visible across the river. A bald eagle's nest is huge, generally four to five feet wide and two to four feet deep, and can be easily seen from a distance. January is the time of year when bald eagles begin nesting activities in Ohio, usually returning to spruce up a previous nest or building a new one. This particular nest was discovered in 2017 and is the first active nest in Cleveland in more than a century. 
And then I have this quote, uh, the eagle nest is a symbol of resilience, according to Wendy Warrick, the Metro Parks Director of Outdoor Experiences. Look at where these birds have chosen to build their nest, not, not that far from where the debris on the river caught fire nearly 50 years ago in 1969. So that uh, was from an article, a Cleveland.com article, the bald eagle's nest in Cleveland for first time in a century. Uh, it's a very interesting article. I, I recommend that you all check that out for additional information about this particular nest. So on my visit, there were two bald eagles near the vicinity of the nest, one adult, one juvenile. I believe the adult to be the same one I had just seen on the trail as it had flown in the direction of the nest. The juvenile was sitting in a nearby tree and I didn't actually see it until it took off and landed deep within another tree and was out of sight. The adult took flight shortly afterward and also disappeared. And here's my picture of the bald eagle nest at the reservation. Right, after a few minutes of waiting, I made my way back to the towpath, but instead of heading directly to my car, I decided to check out the lower 40 trail in search of more birds. I saw an American robin and another great blue heron and ran into fellow virtual field trip participant Sean Missig. It wasn't until I returned to the towpath that I saw my last bald eagle in a distant tree. And there is the last bald eagle uh, of the day for me. And here's my bird list. Uh, notable species, American Widgeon, American Black Dock, Bald Eagle, and Carolina Wren. And then a picture I took of a black capped chickadee. All right, so Alan Rand, uh, he found 40 species at the reservation and he birded four times. Uh, this month's location was full of surprises for the time of year. I had never been to the trails around the Canal Way Center, so I checked them out a few times. My other lists were from East 49th Street Sewer District Outflow, which is really close to where uh, this is. All right. Although I fell short of the January 100, many of the birds I saw on my trips helped me to get to my Ohio total of 93. Even saw one of the resident beavers. So there is a picture of American Kestrel on the left and the beaver on the right, both taken by Al Rand. I visited on 19, 117, 124, 130, <clears throat> excuse me. As for the target species, there are at least four, maybe five bald eagles that live out over there. I had four in flight all, I had four in flight all at the same time one afternoon. It's hard to differentiate adults in flight, but the coloration of the juveniles are more distinct. There are three juveniles for sure because I had them all in one tree on 130. On the topic of eagles, the Ohio Division of Wildlife has only three active nests on record for Cuyahoga County. Based on the number of eagles I see in the county, I'm thinking there may be more. I'm going to dedicate February and March to finding more than three. I can be reached at allen.rand1978 at gmail.com if you know of an active nest in Cuyahoga County or want to look with me. So he did tell me to extend an invitation to all of you uh, who are watching this evening. So if you are interested in locating additional uh, bald eagles nests or, or know of an additional one that maybe the Ohio Division of Wildlife doesn't know about, uh, please contact Al Rand um, if you're interested in helping him with that endeavor. It sounds like a really fun project. All right, and here is Al's bird list. Uh, notable species, the American black duck, and he saw a mallard American black duck hybrid, and there's the picture of it on the left taken by him, and the, the hybrid is the, the duck that's behind uh, the, the mallard that's in the center of the photo. Uh, common golden eye, common merganser, red-breasted merganser, piebald grebe, I love the piebald grebe, it's such a cute bird, uh, that's why I highlighted it. I have bald eagle, belted kingfisher, merlin, American kestrel, brown creeper, an American tree sparrow for the ones that I thought were notable, but you may all have a different opinion and that is fine. All right, Sean, Sean Missig, saw 28 species and visited the canal six times. Uh, I have been to this location a few times in the past, but that was for the mountain bike trails. I was unaware of everything that was in this area and I was ready to explore. My first two trips on 1-3 and 1-9 were sadly uneventful. I did hear Kingfisher on both trips, but it eluded me as usual and had plenty of places to hide. I did see the usual Blue Jays, Songbirds, and a few Eagles, but they were out of range. 
So uh, January 16th, uh, 116 was when my luck turned around. As I was walking along the path, I happened to see Michelle, and she gave me tips about an American widgeon, and also how to view the eagle's nest that I did not know was there. Little did I know this was going to be one of my best days yet. I, had my, I made my way around the path and stopped to take a picture of the random set of train wheels just sitting on the bank. After I got my shot, I looked to my left and a coyote trotted across the path. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to get my camera up and snap a shot, but it was surely a sight to behold. After I went around the bend, I found the area where the American Widgeon, Lifer, was sleeping. I took my time and snapped plenty of shots, but I had hoped I would be able to get a headshot on the way back since it was still sleeping. While taking pictures of the Widgeon, a Kingfisher came screaming by and landed further downstream. This was now my next goal, get a picture of the Kingfisher that had taunted me on all of my trips. And as you can see from the photo on the right, Sean did get on his way back a picture of the American Widgeon with its head up. So, and congratulations on your first lifer uh, this trip. And a second lifer. So when I entered the hiking path, yellow sign, I found a way to get to the bank of the river. It didn't take long and I located the kingfisher. Situations like this remind me that I need to invest in a longer zoom lens, but it was still within range to get a decent shot. After I got, the, after I got these shots, I thought my day was complete. I was happy with everything I captured so far and then came the eagles. I saw several juveniles near the nest area and also flying back toward the entrance to the path. I was able to get a few flight shots, but hoped to get better shots on my way back. Surely this was it, right? Not a chance. As I made my way off of the hiking trail, a bird flew in front of me and landed on the electrical tower. I started taking pictures, but it was not facing me and I couldn't get a positive ID for it. I left the area for a moment and walked back in from the other direction. Now it had turned around so I could see its face. It looked like a small juvenile hawk, but I couldn't tell for sure from the distance I was at. When I ran the image through Merlin, it came back as an American kestrel, another lifer. This was truly a surprise and an amazing bird. It stayed long enough for me to get some shots and then flew into the woods. I also happened to look up at the top of the hill, and there were two kestrels flying above the electrical wires, and they almost appeared to be floating or hovering with little to no effort. On my way back, I was able to capture the widgeon with its head out, and I also captured more shots of the eagles. The best day of birding I've ever had. So that's amazing. Congratulations on your best day of birding, and so far, your two lifers for this field trip. Oh, and I want to just point out that uh, on the left there, the pictures of the American kestrels, one sitting on the tower, and then the two in flight overhead taken by Sean. All right, and then here are the two photos of the belted kingfisher at the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation by Sean Missig. And then juvenile bald eagles at the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation by Sean. And I like the way these two images look um, side by side with the tree and the one eagle and the perch in the tree and the other one in flight. It looks like it might be taking off or landing. All right, January 17th, I returned on 117 to see if I could find the kestrels again, but they were gone. Many of the other birds were not around either, and I thought that would be it for the month. I was proven wrong again. My trips on 123 and 130 were very similar, with birds being much more active. So, Sean, it looks like you didn't see any birds on the 17th. <laughs> so hopefully you did. I'm sorry if there was nothing. That happens sometimes. Uh, January 23. I started off with my first ever sighting of common regancers, another lifer, and congratulations. And they were very aware of my presence, even though I was on the trail, and they were many feet below in the river. I also noticed several gulls circling up and down the river looking for a meal. I was able to find a location along the bank where I had a perfect view of where they were hunting, and I captured a gull with its catch. I had made my way back to the hiking trail, I went down to the river this time. There I found a whole flock of common mergansers and got a few shots before they flew away. The best was yet to come though. While taking pictures of the gulls, a red-tailed hawk hovered above and allowed me to get some great overhead flight shots. I also happened to run into this hawk again by the Blue Heron boardwalk. It flew through the trees and out to the original path I started on. 
I made my way back to that path and tried my best to be stealthy so I could get a picture of this beautiful bird. Thankfully, it didn't even care that I was there and I was able to sit on the bench and take as many pictures as I wanted. I snapped plenty of shots and was able to capture its departure from the area, a wonderful way to end that day. So that does sound like a wonderful day and I would say the reservation owed it to you for what happened to you on the 17th. All right, and then here are uh, two pictures, the gull with a fish on the left, and that's an amazing shot, and then the red-tailed hawk on the right at Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation by Sean Missig. And then the photos of the red-tailed hawk at the reservation. Beautiful shots. These, are, these do seem nice and close. January 30th, on 1.30, I found my fourth lifer of this trip. A pair of hooded mergansers were mixed in with mallards on the river. I was surprised to see them, but also enjoyed their presence. I continued walking by the river, and it had one more trick up its sleeve. I was uh, photographing a juvenile bald eagle in a tree across the river, and it took off. Only it started to circle above the river close by where I was at and soared over the area for quite some time. At this point, I was wondering if it knew what it was doing, as it allowed me to get some spectacular overhead flight shots. I, not every bird is against you, Sean. All right, I couldn't have asked for a better end to my adventures here. This place is nothing short of magical, and it is now easily in my top five favorite places. I will be back many times this year. So on the left is Sean's picture of the hooded merganser at the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation and uh, your fourth lifer award for the field trip. And then here are two juvenile bald eagles at the reservation. That one on the left is really close. That was a great shot indeed. And then a uh, downy woodpecker on the left, very cute, and a Canada geese on the right at the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation. And I, I love this picture of the geese. I thought it was, it, it, compositionally, it's, it's very pleasing to the eye. And then Sean finally did it. I finally got a poem. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it, Sean, unless you wanted me to. Um, or unless you wanted to. I don't know what you want to do. If you want to read it, go ahead. Okay, I'll read it. All right, so just a walk in the park or so it seemed. The beauty I saw was more than I had dreamed. Endless adventure on countless trails, playful eagles, and soaring red tails. The river flowing despite the cold held even more life for me to behold. From mallards to geese, mergansers, and a widgeon, I think I saw everything except for a pigeon. The gulls patrolling from the sky, an attack from above, a meal on every try. A kingfisher taunted me at every turn, three American kestrels, another lifer earned. A coyote came running across the trail, a herd of deer all with white tails. And as I looked from side to side, so many squirrels all trying to hide. Flocks of songbirds searching for berries. Look a woodpecker, is that a downy or hairy? Just then a Carolina wren flew by and a flock of heron dominated the sky. In the distance, a faint call could be heard. Wait a minute, that was no bird. Quickly a train roared through the valley while the days numbered I, ta while the days numbers I tallied. My gear now put away, I sat in my truck, looking back on the day I had tremendous luck. Was this all something I had dreamed or just a walk in the park as it seemed? So that's so beautiful. Thank you so much. And that really does illustrate everything you wrote in your journaling. Uh, and then a picture on the right of a white-throated sparrow at the reservation. And on the previous page, I, I, didn't, I didn't mention the squirrel. Uh, only because I was in the middle of reading the poem. So there's a cute little chunky squirrel <laughs> definitely um, getting its meal this winter. All right, and then uh, Sean's species list. Can't call it a bird list because he puts everything in there, which is fine. Uh, notable is the bald eagle. And then tons of notables on the second slide here. Harry Woodpecker always... Always fascinating to see those. Belted Kingfisher, American Black Duck, Carolina Wren, and then the four lifers, American Widgeon, Common Merganser, Hooded Merganser, and American Custrol. And uh, there is the, a picture of the Hooded Mergansers at the reservation um, on the right there. And what was on the previous slide? Oh, Great Blue Heron on the previous slide. Very beautiful shot of the heron. So thank you very much, Sean. And Nancy, that brings us to your submission. You always like to take this, so if you want to, go ahead. 
and then just tell me uh, when you want me to advance your slides. I'll do that. All right. Um, and I do remember uh, when Michelle was trying to figure out, oh, where should we go in January? You know, normally we go by the lake and we do gulls. Well, gulls are wonderful, um, and but you really need somebody to lead you through all the gulls there. So I said, well, why not the you know, uh, uh, Canal Reservation and, and the Metro Parks? It, it just, it's been a number of years since I had really visited there, but I've always enjoyed things like the, the elevated train tracks that you see in the photograph, Tom Fishburne's photograph on the, on the right-hand side. Um, you know, there's just there's some things left over from some of the um, industry, like the set of train tracks with some train wheels on it. There's just, so it's just kind of fun to see how nature has just healed the land. And, you know, we haven't really taken very good care of our waters and, and our land there, but, but you know, nature kind of covers it up. I don't know if anybody else noticed as you walked along the river how many bricks and, and pieces of cement had been dumped along the riverbanks. Anybody notice that? And those bricks were probably bricks from, from roads that were brick roads that are had to now into asphalt and concrete. So um, again, it's just I think it's just kind of a really fun place. So so I'm so glad that that people have really enjoyed their visits to the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation. So yeah, I was able to get out there two times. Uh, January was a little rough for me, um, so this was a a time for me to to get out and and. Uh, do a little bit of thinking, and, and uh, my husband passed away a couple weeks ago, so so this was a time for me to get out and, and think about him while I was walking. So I went out on January 10th and the 23rd, and uh, got 33 species all totaled on those two on those two uh, walks. Um, most of the time, the the weather said that it was going to be mm, not such a good weather, but Guess what? It turned really sunny on both the days, and uh, uh, it was it was nice. So just as Michelle had talked about earlier, uh, it, it, again, it's an industri was an industrial and it still is an industrial valley, and you know the power lines, the gas line corridors, the railroad tracks, all of these really do provide some different habitats, you know, brushy areas, uh, there's forest, there's the river, and it was nice that the river was nice and flowing because I know the by the time I was walking through, the canal was getting really frozen, uh, but with the, with the river being open, that really was a, a, a magnet for the birds. So, um, so let, let's go on to the next slide, please. Uh, my photos are are really horrible because all I have is a little dinky camera. But I hey, that's photo. a bald eagle. That's a bald eagle in that picture. See it? <laughs> it's probably one of the same bald eagles that, that everybody else has taken too. Um, but so like I said, the river was really productive with Canada geese, mallards. Uh, I had a I had double crested cormorant fly over. Lots of great blue heron, ring billed gull. Uh, on one uh, trip and uh, herring gull on another trip and of course the eagles, um, jays, white-throated sparrows, Carolina rams. But the first trip that I that I took on the 10th, um, again the river was really busy but the trails seemed kind of slow until I hit a certain area and then then wham bam there was it was really fun so again it's, it's always a surprise there. Um, I don't know if anybody else noticed that the red, uh, I'm sorry, the white-breasted nuthatches are singing. Anybody ever hear them singing? All they do is go, nee, 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 uh, again, the mallards, the uh, American black ducks were there as well, too. Uh, as I mentioned, as you see in the second paragraph, um, the first visit, ring-billed gulls, the second visit, herring gulls. And what was cool about the herring gulls, um, if, you, if any of you walked near 
where the uh, big tanks are across the river and then you're standing near the river and on, on the side of the river of the, of the park there's a great big circle again showing how big those tanks really are. I don't know, did you, did you guys know that? That information on the sign says, hey, this is how big those tanks really are, this diameter. But anyhow, there's a little dam, and the, the gulls were, were floating over that little dam, so as the fish went over and, you know, I guess maybe they were, they were a little shiny, they would dive down and, uh, and grab the, the fish. And that was the, the herring gulls that day. So that was kind of fun to really watch them because I could see the adult birds, I could see birds that were uh, the young of that year, actually the previous year, uh, they were really dark uh, brown. So again, it was really, really kind of fun to watch them wheel around. Lots of Canada geese on the river and uh, as other people mentioned, common mergansers. So that was nice. Next, please. Uh, there's my great picture of the common mergansers. See those two, I mean those four blobs in the river? See, see, hey. <laughs> so, so that was fun. Um, so that dirt trail, and I guess there's a name for that dirt trail that goes along the river. Um, luckily it was frozen both times I walked on it. Uh, it can be very muddy, very muddy uh, at other times of the year. But um, eagles, heron, mallard, black duck, and uh, somebody had else had mentioned the mallard and black duck uh, hybrid. Kingfisher zooming by or screaming by, however it was put earlier, and then the mergansers. Um, I did get a, a pied-billed grebe uh, on, I think it was my second trip, yeah, my second trip. And uh, again, the songbirds were just in little pockets in, in certain areas, so they weren't kind of scattered all over. They, they j I just kind of hit them little by little. I think Michelle had mentioned, you know, when she heard the first uh, white throat, and then she said, oh, there's more, because, you know, the whole ground starts moving with white-throated sparrows. And um, I, that's how I found it, too. You see one white throat, and then all of a sudden, oh, the ground is moving. But look through that flock of white throats and you'll get song sparrow, you'll get American tree sparrow, you might get a, a junco or two. Um, on the first trip, I had a really, really nice male eastern tohi pop out. So that was really fun. But uh, cardinals, goldfinch, house finch, chickadees, titmouse, Carolina wren, it was just a whole mashup in one of these areas. I don't know why, but everybody, I give birds of a feather, as they say, flock together. Uh, next, please. And I, I just, I really like this shot of the, the, the towpath and again, how the day just really became really beautiful um, and just how that vegetation has grown up. Um, you could probably imagine what it looked like when the industry was there, when farming was there. Uh, so again, it really did heal itself. Um, both trips I did get to the eagle nest, but neither of the trips did I see the eagles on or near the nest. But that nest is so big, the eagles, at least the female, could have been in the nest and just I just didn't see her at all. Um, so it could have been hunkered down. I did see a northern mockingbird that was guarding a, a fruiting shrub, which was kind of fun. So anytime a robin wanted to come by, well, this mockingbird said, no way get out of here. This is my shrub. Um, well, the robins, and I'll, I'll say it again, I say it every time, I love robins in the winter time because they just look so beautiful and uh, so I like and I enjoy looking at robins. Um, Red-tailed hawks, probably some of the same that, uh, that others saw. Uh, Flicker, that was a nice uh, addition. And morning doves, it was, again, just I really enjoy that park. And I think the next one is what, my uh, my list of birds? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, all the Canada geese on that little island in the river. Hey, that came out pretty doggone well. It looks like a, a study in black and white, doesn't it? <laughs> so Very you can nice. See the list. A third, again, 33 species. Um, Michelle highlighted some of the ones that were really good. So, again, had a great time. Are there any that you would have highlighted instead? Was any that you felt were extra special to you? 
all birds are extra special. American, <laughs> no, robin, American robin in the winter. Yes. <laughs> No, I like, you know, I every time I see a robin, I appreciate it more because of you. So, <laughs> can you I break in? That. I think. Uh, what, what's that? Yeah. Can I break in? Talk, talking about sure. special. Yeah. Uh, Nancy, can you comment on the eastern poey? That's pretty special for winter, isn't it? Yeah, that was pretty nice. Uh, again, I, you know, just looking at this congregation of birds that are feeding on the ground. And of course, I do pishing. If, if anybody is familiar with that, you make this psh, psh, psh noise and things pop out. And this towhee just popped right out. I'm, tr I'm. It was beyond the eagle nest, so you continued down the trail uh, under some power lines. Again, those brushy areas are really good for sparrows. And uh, and again, the uh, towhee was was in that area. I like mockingbirds too. That I see mockingbirds in very urban areas, pretty much. Um, so I, I really enjoy them. No, I, I think that your highlights are great. All right. Well, thank, thank you very you. much thank for you your Josh. contribution, then. This was great. All right. And then, Tom, I, I don't know if you want to take it or if you want me to. I'm, I'm willing to do it. Yeah, I'll um, see what you did here, and, but you can jump in any time, and if I miss something okay. that uh, you, ha you had in mind. But... Um, but yeah, I, eastern towhees in the winter time. That I um, always understood that you know they're they're migrants and see them in the winter time is pretty special. They're one of the birds I look forward to when they I start hearing them in April. And, um, well, pine bull grebes. I saw a couple of pine bull grebes too. Did not question it. So so that was pretty nice. I, I yeah I, maybe they're around more than I realize. Um, I saw the pie bull grebes too, uh, way up north on the on the river, and um, I didn't get any pictures. They were they were pretty distant, and I worked my way down to the bank to try to get a picture. Um, when I was coming back up, um, I don't, did anybody else slip and fall in the mud like I did? <laughs> <laughs> I I I had two cameras at the time, and I muddied both of my cameras up and my binoculars. And um, ended up sending one of the cameras back to the factory because it was covered to have it professionally oh. clean. But I got that back. But all part of the adventure. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, I feel partly place. responsible. Yeah, three... I sent you there. Ah <laughs> uh, no 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 no. I just I gotta be careful as I get older. It's not the way the way it used to be, but it's still fun. Hey, I used to tell people I'm gonna die doing this. I'm gonna fall off a cliff or something. But um, yeah, this was this was a lot of fun. So I visited three times, and um, yeah, I didn't know where the eagle's nest was um, until my second visit, um, and uh, I was glad to, uh, that Michelle uh, gave some directions as to where that was. I caught that on the, uh, one of the, the videos. Um, but even on that, that my first visit, I uh, I did see a couple eagles. Um, one close by, I forget the name of that trail too, that Lower 40 Trail, I think is what you called it maybe? Um, yeah, I think the Lower 40 Trail. Yeah, I, I saw one off of there, I think. And then the other one, the picture that you showed earlier was um, later on. That was that was the only adult I saw. Mainly, I just saw the juveniles. Um, and um, yeah, I didn't see any activity on the nest. It was still kind of early. Um, I don't know. Talking about eagles, though, might, might as well mention it now. Um, it's interesting how the timing of uh, the nesting occurs um, in in Ohio. Uh, typically, I've heard that um, uh, eggs are laid um, in the second half of February, beginning of March, something like that. Um, I've heard people say some cute things about Valentine's Day. About uh, it's about the earliest around these parts that eggs get laid. But down in Florida, they were they were already hatching down in Florida, which is I just find that fascinating uh, that uh, the timing in Florida is so so much earlier. Okay, go ahead to the next slide. And uh, yeah, there's that. That bald eagle again. That was a, a earlier shot of it uh, when I saw it coming over. 
the one on the left, the adult, on the way out. And um, yeah, this this uh, juvenile that I spotted was relatively close. That was the one by the, I guess, that, uh, that other trail there, that lower 40. And um, yeah, I was trying to figure out maybe how old this was. It's, I understand it's a little questionable. It's variable as to the molting, the way it occurs, um, about how much white is on its head and that, that line through the eye. So I, I was trying to do some work to um, to figure out um, how old that was. And I'm, my best guess is that if that bird hatched in April, like most of them around here, it'll turn four this coming April is, um, is my best guess, but at least three, I would say. Um, but I was happy to get the, a shot so uh, close to that, and and I I, I love the, the patterns of the the juveniles, but um, mm -hmm. can't always figure them out. That's for sure. Yeah, so I also see that uh, there, that was January 10th, my first visit. Um, and next slide. Yeah, I went back on the 13th. I happened to catch the the red-tailed hawk, the juvenile, um, by the. Uh, the railroad trestle was where that one was, and uh, it stayed there for me for a little bit to get a get a good picture of it. And then, boy, was I happy when I got started seeing the common organzer. So, so this was the day I I was going up to see the um, eagle's nest. Now that I had an idea where it was, and um, I, I spotted a hooded organzer, but I couldn't get a shot of it. I heard the kingfishers a couple, you know, but I couldn't get a shot of the kingfishers. Um, but I was able to get a, get some shots of the uh, the, the mergansers, and that's um, and the common mergansers I don't see a lot, so I was really really happy. And uh, both uh, the females and the males, uh, the females are uh, really sharp looking with their uh, uh, feathery head there. Uh, let's go to the next one. Yep, now I, that female took off, and um, yeah, I uh, where I, on my album I, I wrote that they left the key, the male common mergansers in the dust, uh, <clears throat> splash that is. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was it's interesting how you put those two together. I didn't realize it would come out that good. I took um, it's actually the same yeah, photo. Yeah, it looks I, awesome I, this way. <laughs> it's it's actually the same same photo. I had both of those in the same shot. I just cropped them that way. I really enjoyed seeing the uh, the female uh, taking off from the water the way it was, so, and um, the light on the um, at, at that time when I was there too, depending on the position of the of the birds, it made a difference on how the the color came out. And so that one of the male um, was one of the better ones because they had, a lot of times they, the head came out dark uh, that I that I had. Um, Okay, good. Go to the next slide. Okay, and here, um, when I did get up to the eagle's nest, and I saw about, uh, I saw four in the air that day, as well as the one perched in the tree. And um, I was moving around, checking out the different positions I could get a view of the of the nest and these eagles. When I was actually behind some shrubbery, and this happened, I I caught this juvenile flying by. The one perch, but I uh, was happy I was able to get enough of the clearing through the shrub stuff, um, my crop stuff out, of course, uh, to watch this juvenile pass by and then turn and and, and head to the north up up the river. Um, go ahead and to the next slide. Yeah, more of the um, common mergansers, a couple males in the couple females on the left. Notice how dark the, uh, the male's heads are in that picture you know, with the sunlight direction. And on the right-hand side, the one had turned its head so you can see a little more of that green. And, the, and that um, female was down in the water, apparently um, um, feeding. And um, I see, yeah, I, I looked up, I was curious about what they eat, and uh, I imagine, I guess you got that quote uh, that I 
I use too. Common organzers mostly eat fish, but they also eat aquatic invertebrates, including insects, mollusks, crustaceans, and worms, frogs, small mammals, birds, and plants. So I guess they eat all kinds of stuff. Um, so I imagine it was just down there uh, trying to pick some stuff up out of the water, um, unless there's some other kind of behavior. I really don't know. But it was fun uh, to, to watch that, too. Let's see what you got next on the next slide. Ah, uh, the downy woodpecker. Um, yeah, this is the same downy woodpecker in both cases. It was pretty close to to, uh, to me at the time near the, the Blue Hearn Boardwalk. And uh, hey, um, Michelle, can you direct a pointer to the tail on the left? Um, are you able to? Yeah, and up a little higher where those two dots are. Right here. Right. So one, you know, yeah, right there. Uh, you know, one of the ways you can tell a difference between the downy woodpecker versus a hairy woodpecker. A hairy woodpecker would not have those two dots. Uh, they're actually part of a band on the lower part of the tail. And um, I mean, this is pretty obvious. The short beak um, certainly makes it obvious that it's a downy woodpecker. But sometimes they're, it, it can be can be variable and, and a little hard to tell. But that um, those little two dots there on the tail um, are the Edge, edges of a, like a band, a dash that they have, and um, that's a very helpful field mark when it comes to downy woodpeckers. That's the point. But, um, yeah, that was a treat to get that one so close. It was it was busy feeding there on that one tree on the left for a while, and then it decided to jump up higher, and then I was able to snap that picture too. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Uh, more widgeon pictures. Yep. Yeah. The, the first day I, I saw the widgeon that was sleeping, but I and um, but um, I kind of quickly went over that other other picture of the widgeon. But then this one was moving around this day and uh, fluffing its feathers. And um, yeah, I thought when it when it got over close to the the mallards, I thought that made a nice uh, nice picture with the colors of the mallards as well. That was further away. For that one, but that the widgeon was a real treat to see. By all means, I see widgeons here and there, uh, more, com more much more often than common organisms. But the widgeon, just the same, is still a, a very neat bird. And uh, you don't always see the green. But again, depending on the, um, the sunlight and how it how it hits. Uh, but uh, when uh, when that uh, widgeon turned its head there um, on the right hand side, you able to get a, get some of that green look of it so, on his head. Okay, what you got next? Ah, the red belly woodpecker on the left. I, I caught up um, just off the trail by the canal. Um, kind of where the, if anybody saw the, the flood poles, um, it's up in that area. That's a female red belly woodpecker because uh, it doesn't have the full red on the crown. And then another one of the, um, the last time I went, um, I only, that's the only eagle I saw. Um, so that, that on my third trip, um, I think it was later in the day too, so maybe that made, made a difference. But uh, the only eagle I saw was that one uh, high up in the sky. That was around the vicinity of the nest, uh, but it just kind of circled around a little bit and then left. But I was able to get a couple, snap a couple shots of that as well. So, yeah, yeah, I don't count my species. I'm not really a bird counter, but I just enjoy my time out taking the walks. Loved your poem, Sean. Wonderful. And um, so, uh, what, anything left? Um, or is that it, Michelle? I think we have the American uh, black dog. Yeah, the black. Yeah, you know, I would have overlooked those if it wasn't for you. You posted something on Facebook, I think, about your black dogs. And I would have overlooked these. I think I would have, if if um, you didn't do that. I, said, oh, I got a look, and sure enough, you know, I spotted these guys um, swimming south along the river there. So they have a picture on the right, a pair of the female on the left, and then the, the male behind it. And, uh, 
Yeah, this this time of the year you can tell them apart, but there are times of the year when it's hard to tell the the, the American black ducks from a female mallard. I think. But I'm not as good of a birder as a lot of people, so I just have fun. What else you got? And that's it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And we don't mind that you don't count the birds because you take such beautiful photos of them. So um, very much appreciate your efforts with this field trip. And I, I just want to say thank you to everyone who participated, Al Rand, Sean Missig, Nancy Howell, and Tom Fishburn uh, for participating. I know that January can be uh, well, winter months can be rough with going out into the cold, braving the cold to find the birds, and I, I certainly appreciate that you did that uh, to make this wonderful scrapbook to share with everyone. And a huge thank you to the Cleveland Metro Parks for the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation. If you didn't get a chance to go, I put the address there. Uh, that address is actually will take you to the Canalway Center, the, the Nature Center, and then you can make your way to the towpath uh, from there. And then please uh, visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. Um, we have them scheduled out for the next few months. This month, we are going to Bradley Woods Reservation in Westlake to look for the black capped chickadee. I already uh, had my visit, and I, I found more than black capped chickadees. I also saw two pileated woodpecker on my visit together. So that was, that was really fun. Uh, I went on the really cold day we had. Well, I guess they've all been really cold. L last Saturday when it was like, feels like negative four degrees, I bundled up and went out there and birds were active. I was I was pleasantly surprised. Um, so with that, uh, I would like to open it up for discussion. If anyone has anything they'd like to comment on or ask any of the people who participated in the field trip, please take yourself off, off mute. This is very informal discussion we'll have now. Well, thank you, Kathy, for joining us. I got your text or your, your chat. Always good to, ha to have uh, new faces on these programs. Um, I would like to say, Nancy, um, uh, you, you had mentioned that in your groups of sparrows, you always look because you, you, they, they all mix in together, and that, that's absolutely true. And I just thought it was so funny that when the, the field of sparrows that I had, I, I did look. I mean, there were more. I, I counted eight white-throated sparrow and all I saw was white-throated sparrow and there were more birds there but I didn't get my binoculars on them so I just didn't even count them. I'm like I don't know what they were. They, they could be more white-throated sparrow or they could be something else. So um, I just thought that was funny. There, there might have been like 15 or 16 birds there and I got my binoculars on eight of them and they're all the same. <laughs> I, saw, I saw quite That's a few. Okay. Like, Nancy, you want to say something? No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I saw quite a few of the um, white-throated sparrows. Um, I couldn't get a good picture of any of them down by the trail. They were busy foraging more kind of deeper in the shrubbery type stuff. Um, saw plenty of them, some some that are more white, some of a tan version. And um, I was reading something about those. Um, for the first time, I heard that uh, it's typical um, that um, the, uh, the brighter white white-throated sparrows typically mate with the tan white-throated sparrows. It, and that's oversimplified. I, I, I don't remember exactly what I read, but it was pretty fascinating um, that uh, hmm. the, the way they, um, they tend to mate with each other. Yeah, I read that too earlier. Maybe you shared it <laughs> on Facebook. I remember reading that as well. I thought that was really interesting. And uh, I, I didn't even know there was a tan version before I read that. So now I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking through all my pictures, and I just have the black, the, 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 the black and white cab in all my pictures from the past. So I'm going to have my keep my eyes open for the tan, the tan caps. Now I know that the white crown sparrow comes in a tan cap, but that I think is just when it's a juvenile, and then as it becomes an adult, it gets the black instead of the the, the chestnut. Um, I thought that was that was interesting that it's not that, more similar. That's what I understand. Nancy would know better than, yeah. than me, but I think 
um, the juvenile white crowns, they, they, they can look sharp sometimes so the way they are. They're, the white throat yep. is embarrassing, but the white ones always grab my attention. So. Yep. Yeah, I think, Michelle, you, again, were probably attracted to the white-throated sparrows just because of that bright coloration, the ones that are the brown or the gray-striped or tan-striped forms. You probably, oh, yeah, yeah, it's not quite as bright, so I don't want to take a picture of it. Oh, probably. <laughs> but I, I'm interested now, so I will definitely um, look for that. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, American black ducks are, are kind of fun too, Tom. Um, the to me, an American black duck, the body is dark chocolate, whereas and then the head is a is a much lighter color. You almost see a demarcation, not a ring, but you know the head is kind of a gray brown, and then the body is like a a dark chocolate, and then a female mallard is pretty much like a milk chocolate all the way through. So. So uh, think of think of it as food, and you'll remember. I'll definitely remember that. that. That's a, that's a great um, description. Yeah. And then yeah, then on your way home, thing. stop at a store and grab a, a Cadbury <laughs> bar that's like seventy two percent dark chocolate or something. Michelle, I wanted to say thank you to you for. Um, sifting through the piles and piles of stuff that I submit to you every month. No, it's fun. Yeah, no, it's, uh, and I think I use most of your pictures, and I use most of Tom's as well. I, I, can't, I can't help it because they're all so good. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I agree. Tom's are great as well. And, and Nancy, yours are too. I don't care if you want to sit here and say, oh, I've got just this dinky little camera. I don't care. They still come out great. Um. <laughs> I also want to say that the poem that I wrote, I did not give it a title. Uh, so if anybody wants to submit a title to me, they are more than welcome to, because um, I will put this in my, my little book of poems that I've written throughout my life. So as of right now, it'll you know, remain maybe a like, title. Oh, I don't know what happened. My screen disappeared. Um, maybe um, like a walk in a park, a walk in the park. Could be a fun title. I don't know. That's. I want to find okay. it. Because you have it here, and then I think you end it with mm -hmm. a walk in the park. Yeah, I, I kind of. So it it kind of starts yeah, I, I and ends with that. that. Yeah. So yeah. that that's just an idea. You can you know you can wait and see if anyone has okay. any other ideas. <laughs> yeah, and then I also did want to mention. Um, one photo that I did submit but I didn't talk about was I actually snapped a shot of the um, large blue pole that showed the um, height of all the different floodwaters. And I found that to be very fascinating when I saw that just kind of sitting there next to the river. And, you know, some of them weren't exactly that high, but if I remember right, I think 2006 or something along that line there was something that was just way up there I was thinking wow where I'm standing I'd be completely underwater so it was very very interesting to see that where was that along the trail yeah where was that I don't think I saw it uh I found that when I was on that yellow hiking trail and it was okay. towards the end where it connected into um, kind of the Back walkway. The so, okay. Yeah, kind of by the um, – because I had to walk over a bridge then to get back over to the – or to get back over to the trail to loop around to the start of that. So it was kind of towards the tail end. Okay. That makes sense that I didn't see it because I didn't take it all the way. When I when I went to the nest, I, I went back the way I came because I was hoping to see that Carolina run again. <laughs> so I, I just so I didn't finish the loop to, to even see that. So next time I'm yeah. there, I, I will, I'll take that. I'll, I'll take a look at it. I, I think there's the some mis misprint with that, though, too. I was looking, I, I, I came to Ohio in 
April of 2006. So you were saying June, Sean, of 2006, when it was really, really high? Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, that was the, that was the spring that I arrived in Ohio. And, uh, so that, that was of interest to me. And, um, right underneath of the, the top, I'm looking at the picture now, um, was uh, January of 1959. And, um, and what it says there, it says, um, 12 foot, six inches there, whereas the top one was 23 feet, seven inches. And I'm saying, you know, proportionately, that, that's not right at all, you know. And um, but I actually did some Googling to try to find out. And here I found out that January 1959 was actually 21 feet back then. So I, I think it's a misprint type of transposition mm -hmm. or <laughs> nobody ever fixed. I don't know. Um, oh, wow, that's but, interesting. Uh, but, but it's a tall pole. And, yeah, I, I'm wondering you know, if I'd get back there again, I'd look at that and see how. I mean, it looked like it was a pretty tall pole to me when I was there, but I, um, I, I'd probably look at it closer next time I go. We do get any, any, Yeah, any additional questions or thoughts before we end the call? Thank you again. Yeah, thank you, again. Michelle. Thank you. This, yeah, this this was fun. As you all usual. right. Well, thank you. I, I'm glad you all could make it tonight, and um, thank you to those who participated and going to the location. So, have a good evening, everyone. Thank good you. Night.